Fundamentally, stacking silver is about acquiring as much silver as you can with your fiat currency. With the choice between government or private minted silver, what is a stacker to do? What really matters with stacking silver and why? Before we get into the facts, truths, and myths around this decision, let's start with a quick little story. An uncle and his nephew were walking through the park when they came across two dogs, let's say procreating, just in case there's kids around. The nephew turned to the uncle and said, Unc, what are those two dogs doing over there? Feeling that the boy was way too young for the real conversation and not wanting to venture down the rabbit hole, he responded creatively with, well, one of the dogs hurt his legs and the other dog is trying to help him get home. The boy had a curious look on his face, which then turned to a look of understanding. He then said, ain't that just like a friend? They say they're going to help you out and they end up screwing you every time. Well, that's a pretty funny story. Its connection to precious metals isn't exactly clear. So let me explain. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people on the platform who believe they are here to help, but ultimately they end up you in the end. While I don't believe that that's the intention, I think it comes down to facts, truth, and myths. An unfortunate part of our human condition is that if something is repeated enough, we just accept it as truth, or as the saying goes, a lie told often enough becomes the truth. I can think of no better example of this than what we see here on YouTube. I find the biggest challenge to be separating out the facts and the truths, and they're not the same thing. And of course, we even have myths. The bottom line is that facts are indisputable, truth is acceptable, and myths, which are a widely held but false belief or idea, is something totally different. A clear example of this distinction is the idea that premiums are made back when you sell. That's not a fact, period. End of sentence, hard pause, full stop. I often find myself taking on these truths and myths kinds of conversation because if left unchecked, these things will cost you money. Today, we're gonna to take on government minted coins. And while this has circulated for years, recently I've seen more and more misleading narratives around these coins. Unless price is very close, I prefer generic rounds. That aside, government minted coins have a place in your stack. We just need to be clear about why you should purchase them. So let's have a discussion about facts, truth, and myths when it comes to government minted coins. For years, I've heard government minted coins are better and are the way to go because of these six reasons, purity and weight, government backing, legal tender, government protection, trust recogniz recognizability, tax reporting slash anonymity. We're gonna do this family feud style. First, we're gonna start with purity and weight. Now call me crazy, but unless you're buying in a back alley, all the coins we buy are three or four nines fine. And of course we have the outliers with the gold and the silver ego and the cougaran. So when it comes to purity and weight and quality, I just don't understand what the government mint has that a private mint doesn't. But we'll let the board decide. Survey says, <clears throat> and by the way, wouldn't having such a higher alloy content in the coin make the gold eagle less desirable because it's not as pure as a 3.9 or 4.9 fine coin? I guess that logic is just lost or just gets ignored because it's an American coin and it doesn't fit our eagle narrative. Moving on. Next, we have government backing. So you want to play the government backing card. Okay. So what does government backing really mean? Does that mean it ensures a certain purity quality weight? Because I thought we just covered that in the previous point. Also, don't privately minted coins have the same assurances? Plus, let's not talk about the quality control issues with the US Mint, especially with the 24 karat gold buffalo. If you're finding any value in this content or you simply want to support the channel, Please take a quick moment to hit the like button. It helps spread the word about this channel and allows us to reach more people. It is greatly appreciated. Next, legal tender, it's exchangeable for money. I almost didn't even include this one because it's so ridiculous. I have literally heard people say, well, if things get really bad, at least your coin is currency. You can spend it like paper money. I even read a story about a guy who tried to pay using a silver eagle. So let me see if I got this correct. You spend $25 on a silver coin and you're willing to spend it like a dollar bill. And if the dollar collapses, like some of them seem to be almost rooting for, 
Are you really going to trade your coin in for the dead currency? Hear me out. If at any point in your life, any of you would like to exchange a silver eagle for one dollar, I will gladly exchange with you. And in fact, I will give you a five dollar bill just to be nice. Because again, that's the kind of guy I am. I already know the answer to this, but let's check the board and see if this excuse is up there because it's legal tender. Survey says, mm. government protection. Well, we know it's not protected in terms of getting a dollar for the coin you pay $25 for. So there must mean something about counterfeiting because that's a federal offense and you would go to jail for counterfeiting. And so a government mini coin means it's less likely to be counterfeited. Well, if they're prosecuting people for fakes, we better have a big plane because there's a bunch of folks in China and other countries flooding the market with fakes. And if you happen to order one of those fakes from China and you go over to the US government and say, hey, I got a fake eagle. The government is supposed to protect me from this. What do you think the government will say or do? Trust, recognizability, and therefore it's easier to sell. Again, unless we're buying and selling in back alleys, your local LCS pretty much knows any coin that you could have. And they also have these devices that can check and make sure what you're selling is authentic. So let me guess, you mean that if you're going to sell in a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, eh, okay, maybe I'll give you that much. But remember, we just finished talking about fakes that are floating around. Just because it looks like a government minted coin doesn't make it true. I mean, if you were going to buy a $2,000 gold coin, wouldn't you test it? I mean, I would. So being recognized means what if we're always going to test our metals, which everyone really should do, when you make a purchase? Your real issue won't be that your coin is not government minted. It's going to be that no one wants your five ounce pickle coin. Shout out to Silver Forever and that great video you did on the ridiculous coins that are out there. With that said, I'll give you this point, but I'm just not going to give you a lot of points for it. Next, tax reporting and anonymity. Let's be clear. You have to pay your taxes no matter what. The difference is who does the reporting. So this argument about your local coin shop filing a 1099B is really a red herring argument. Meaning, if you don't sell more than 25 gold ounces at a time, uh, or a thousand ounces of silver, or a thousand dollars face value of junk silver, nothing has to be reported. Of course, you need to check the state laws and you with your tax people, but ultimately, don't sell 25 ounces, sell 24 in one place, and wait, maybe a couple of weeks or something, and then go to another LCS. So let's take a look at the board and see if tax reporting anonymity works. Survey says, mm. so our government minted coins a good investment. It's truly a subjective and personal decision. I'm not sure I really care to the degree that the reason for buying them are legit and not what is being propagated in the community as half truths and myths. Let me tell you the most legit and the absolute number one reason for buying government bullion coins or government minted coins. The answer is because you want to. As you hear me say over and over again, for the most part, you should really let the math guide your decision making. And at the same time, there's nothing wrong with government minted coins. I just think you have to find a way to purchase them in the most profitable way as possible. I just call nonsense on the traditional reasons given why people are supposed to stack this coin or that coin or this coin. It doesn't matter. As we have established, gold is gold for the most part and silver is silver for the most part. As I used to say to my students when I taught ethics and morality classes, I don't care what you think. All I care is that you think. And so when it comes to these coins, if you want to buy government minted, buy government minted. It is your money. My only issue is let's not put out bad information or justify it with half truths or myths that just aren't accurate. That is what gets us in trouble. That's what's 
got us in the situation that premiums on Eagles used to be reasonable and now they're $13 because for some reason we believe that it's worth paying that $13 for the Silver Eagle. And every excuse I've ever heard, most of them just don't pass the smell test for me. In the comments section, I want you to share what is your favorite government minted coin. For me, it's the Philharmonic. And I just, I don't know what it is about it. I love the details, I love the design. I just think it's super cool. I know a lot of people think they're lame, so don't judge me. Also, what is your favorite non-government minted round? I love the cheapest thing I can get. Okay, all right, all right, all jokes aside. I actually love anything Buffalo. And actually I was able to get this little cool Buffalo and it kind of has this little proof type finish on it, which is kind of unique and I don't normally see it that way. Give yourself an A plus for seeing this video all the way through. Always stack smarter and never stop learning.